where's my big boy? Ooh, there's my big boy. I got your big hairy belly. I got you. Oh, hey, welcome to No Two Gays About It. I uh, bet you thought I was talking to my husband. Nope. I was talking to Jack, my cat. This season, it's all about relationships, and today we are going to discuss the very important and deep relationship that many gay men over 50 have, the relationship with our pets. Hello, I'm Tom Burke, a very proud pet parent. And I'm Michael Foley. Yay. Hello, Michael Foley. Hello. What's happening with you, Michael? Other than being horrified slightly, um, you know, not much. Just summer's been crazy busy for me and um, kind of enjoying it and riding the wave and just kind of having a blast. Um, what about you? What's going on in your world? You know, same thing. The end of summer, it's been great. Um, although to keep on topic, the last 15 minutes, I have been spending with Jack, my cat, who happens to be a long-haired rag doll. And any pet parent out there who has a long-haired animal understands what happens when your long-haired animal has some bathroom issues. It's so disgusting to have to clean those animals up. And yet, we do it, because that's what being a pet parent is all about. Well, having changed a bazillion shitty diapers in my life, I can totally relate, but I haven't had a pet. Mm. I haven't had a pet, honestly, since I've lived in L.A. Um, and Palm Springs, since okay. I left the East Coast. Cool. So, um, yeah. Well, let's talk about these relationships that gay men over 50 have with their pets. Before we actually have a little discussion here, I just want to go over a couple uh, statistics that I found, um, which are kind of great. Seven out of 10 LGBTQ adults own pets. That's a lot. Seven out of 10, don't you think? That's a huge amount. Yeah. Does, it, does it give you a breakdown there of lesbians well, versus gay men? No. However, 63% um, of heterosexual adults have pets. So more gays and lesbians uh, and TQ pluses have more pets than heterosexuals. Uh, this was a, something else. 90% of gay pet owners say that their pet is a member of their family. Uh, duh. Like, yeah, of course. <laughs> Don't roll your eyes at me, Mr. Foley. I saw it I'm coming. going to get so much hate yeah, coming at me from this episode, but okay, what are so you going to do? Just a few more stats here. 63% of the LGBTQ um, pet owners own a cat, as opposed to 52% of heterosexuals who own cats. Kind of funny. Um, however... Straight people own more dogs than gay people do. 71% of straight uh, pet owners own a dog, and 62% uh, of LGBTQ pet owners have a dog. Crazy, right? Um, uh, yeah, it kind of makes sense to me, though, honestly. Um, so here's a question for you yes. uh, about the breakdown, because you are a single man, and you are out there meeting more single people than I am, um, mainly because no one wants to meet me, but... Who do you see out there in the world owning more pets? Gay men over 50 who are single or gay men over 50 who are partnered? What do you think about that? That is a very... E well, no, it's actually not. I think more couples I know own pets yeah. than single folk. And I mean, I could give you a, a, what I think are the reasons for that. Um, because as with children... Um, pets require a lot of attention. Right. And to have two people caring for it, like if one's working during the day or just traveling, um, and I know this couple that this happens to often, one is out of town, so the other one becomes the, 
you know, he always says, I'm a single mom with two, with two dogs, um, while his husband's out of town. And, you know, the, the, the balance shifts there. So when the other one comes back into town, he's like, I'm taking a little break from the, the monsters and they're yours for a couple of days. So I think there's that tag team thing that happens um, with couples that if you're single, the onus is completely on you. And dogs especially require so much attention that, um, you know, you really do have to plan your schedule around them. Okay, well, um, I'm going to not agree with you on a lot of this stuff. That's okay. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> first of all, uh, I, we have had, you know, Scott and I have been together for 35 years. We've had a lot of pets in that 35 year span, um, including one cat that was 21, one cat that was 20. I mean, we've had, I think it's seven or eight pets, uh, in that time period. Dogs are not easier than cats. I'm sorry. Cats are so, <laughs> have, just need a lot of. A lot. You mean um, cats are more difficult than dogs? Well, the, not that they're more difficult. They just require, like people, a lot of people think, oh, cats are so easy. No, they are not. They demand just as much attention, just oh, as absolutely. much Oh, absolutely. But if you, if you need to go out of the house for, let's say, six or seven hours, the cat is pretty capable of taking care of itself for that time where a dog, you know, they're sitting there with their legs crossed or they might have an accident. Okay, I agree with that. Yeah. But later, we're going to be talking about all the ridiculous things that gay men over 50 do with their pets. And I am going to be lumped in that group because if I'm going out for a full day, I'm having a babysitter stay with, you know, my animals just because. Um, but the other thing that you said, uh, that... Yes, I agree that more couples have pets, at least in my world. It seems like most couples have pets, gay couples. But the onus is usually on one of us. And I just said one of us, meaning me. Yeah. I'm the one who yeah. does everything. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, 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 being, being an uncle uh -huh. um, of a cat, long-haired cat, I, I have seen that happen. Where right. it's, definitely, it's definitely your... That's your wheelhouse. Well, and it, it's not so much that I've chosen this, but, you know, um, I, I'm i like the mom, and it's got the pail that gets to play around, and I'm the one who has to do all the, you know. But that's been true all the way along. You know, we've had dogs, we've had cats. So anyway, um, but I also see that in my couple friends, that there's usually the one who is the one who's doing all of the stuff. And, you know, I cannot wait. I'm going out of town in a couple of weeks and I cannot wait because I'm going solo. Um, just so Scott sees what I go through every Yes, day. and I, I plan you on know. doing wellness checks during that period that you're out of town. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you very much. R rest secured that. knowing that he, he will not be alone. <laughs> Great. Thanks. So, um, all right. So let's get back to this whole thing about the relationship that gay men have with their pets. And the first question that we have to answer is, you know, why? Why do so many gay men, especially over 50, have pets? Do you have any thoughts on that? Oh, absolutely. Um, okay. I think it's companionship. Definitely. Um, there's, it's, it's interesting. I had a conversation with a f single friend of mine. Um, we had dinner on Saturday and I hadn't seen him in like 25 years. Um, who has, who said to me, my dog is my life now. I don't even date. Um, because it provides him with a level of intimacy that's safe. And of course my response to him, is that really good for you? Um, and he was like, well, I just don't have to deal with people. And I was like, again, I said, so is that yeah. really good for you? I'm not sure <laughs> you know? about that. Right. So I, for some people, not all, I have noticed it is definitely an avoidance of people. True. Um, where they, they replace whatever relationship it is that they might have with a human being and they put it onto this pet and it becomes their world, which is more than okay, but it does seem to maybe rob that person of something a little deeper with another human being. Oh, definitely. Yeah. But then I also think that pets open you up to a whole new world as well, especially dogs, because you have to take that dog yeah. out. You take them to a dog park. You get to meet other dogs. 
dog parents, you know, um, I don't know, you don't have a dog, but I know a lot of guys use the, their dogs for dating apps, you know, like they walk around yes. and so people will come up and talk to a dog quicker than they will talk to a human. Absolutely. And it's a, it's an easy connection. icebreaker. Yeah, yeah. there you it's go. It's an easy right? icebreaker. It's a very social sort of in, I yeah, think, exactly. for a lot of people where you're right. People are going, oh, my dog, your dog is so cute. And then other things happen from that. Right. So um, it is great for that. I think also having a pet gets you out of your head. It's not all about you, you totally. know, and a lot of yeah. people need that where, especially those of us gay men over 50, as we're aging and aging and aging, you know, the older you get, the less you really want to do. You just want to stay in your house. You're not feeling well, whatever. But if you have a little, little animal that re relies on you, that, you know, it's your responsibility. You have to get up. doesn't matter how bad your back hurts. It doesn't matter how crunchy your knees are as you're walking. Right. You have to get up. You have to take care of this animal. And it kind of gets you out of your head in a way. Uh, you have responsibilities. You have you know, whatever it is you have to do for this other being. Um, so I think that helps a lot in getting out of your head and not just being all about me, 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 and poor me, poor me. Wait a minute. I got to get my dog out. Let's take him to a dog park. Oh, I got to meet some new people and just right. talk to somebody today. Or just that... get out of the house because, you know, when you take your dog for a walk, it, it changes the chemical balance in your head, you know, sure. your endorphins start to fire and you're outside and you're doing things. And, um, yeah, it, there is, you know, there's a bazillion studies out there that talk about the health benefits of having a pet. Sure. And I read a number of uh, studies just on that same thing for men over 50, gay men over 50. One, uh, one thing that I was reading a lot, um, and I know you and I both see this a lot, um, Men of our age and older didn't really have the opportunity to have children, whereas, you know, the younger queer community are, are more open to adopting or having surrogates or, you know, having children. Um, a lot of men our age and older treat their animals as their, and I do not like this term, just, it's just a personal thing, fur babies, um, yeah. that these are their babies. This, this is their way of being yeah. paternal. Um, or maternal, um, which is not a bad thing, you know. Um, Absolutely not. It not is, at it all. It is not a bad thing. Any Anytime anybody is capable of giving more love to anything right. out there, it's a really good thing. But then there's that line where it crosses into... Craziness? Some, I was going <laughs> to say dysfunction, but let's go with crazy. <laughs> And believe me, when we start talking about the craziness, I'm one of those guys. I mean, I, 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 there are some lines, you know, I, I'm not, yeah, there are some lines that I'm not crossing, but I, I do, you know, have to throw myself into that a little bit crazy with your animal guy. Um, well, yeah, because, you know, growing up, I raised quails and ducks and chickens and rabbits, and I always had a cat, and I had two that were by they they were like dogs and that's what i don't I, people who aren't cat people i always say to them you've never had a cat right because you would be because they're like dogs would never leave my side as soon as i got into bed at night they were on my chest paws up here and would go to sleep with me and at some point during the night obviously i i always felt like they were doing that to make sure i was safe and when i fell asleep you know obviously they leave you at some point in the night um and there was always something comforting about that because it, it, it was always like, I got you. I'm here with you. And um, yeah, I always loved that. And I, I do miss it, but I also feel like apartment life isn't good for, for me. Sure. I don't feel it's a, it's a fair shake for um, an animal. So now in your dating life, do you like it falling asleep with men with their hands around your neck? <laughs> <laughs> around my neck no but i do love falling asleep with somebody's head on my chest okay so there is that same same thing because like, i like gotcha. i am a cuddler i'm a cuddler okay. i'm okay. a cuddler good, good for what you can i say uh, another really good positive aspect of having a pet is self-care you know that animals are so freaking amazing because they just give us this unconditional love no matter what we do 
it's okay. No matter how horrible we look or how fat we are or how whatever, whatever, they don't give a shit. They're like, yeah, you're my person. I love you. You're great. You know, and especially with, you know, lives, our lives are all crazy and busy and we have so much going on to just to hear that or feel that from something, some little being is just amazing, yeah. you know, um, in our in our daily life. So self care is definitely a big part of why uh, I believe why a lot of gay men over fifty have their pets. Um, because again, we're not hearing that a lot out there in the world. You're great. You're wonderful. No matter what. Yeah. You're, and you're, th yeah, that's you're right because it. Having a pet makes you feel valued because there is something there that depends solely on you for its well-being. Yeah. And there is, there is a definite, eh, ego boost may be the wrong term, but that's all I got right now, um, where it does make you feel needed on a level that, you know, not having a pet, you, you don't if you're single or, you know, in it, it, yeah, it just brings it to a different level, knowing you know, that something depends on you completely. No kidding, right? Um, on that same line, I found this great quote from, um, you might know this guy, these guys, the, the old gays on YouTube. You know who they are, right? Yeah, They're also out here in yeah. Palm Springs. Um, they are far older than we are, of course. But um, <laughs> this is a quote from Robert, one of the old gays. Um, and it's about his very first rescue dog, which he got when he was older than we are. He said, I was living by myself, and when I brought her into the house, she was the only other person here with me. She was excellent for me because I was expecting to die within a short period of time, and I think her spirit coming into my life may have saved my life. She was my lifesaver. Because she gave him a purpose. She gave Absolutely. him a reason why he needed to get up and take care of himself. Um, because so, like yeah. you said earlier, it gets you out of yourself. Right. There's a level of selfishness that you can't really abide by anymore when you have a, a pet. Yeah. You know, yeah. that again, something depends on you and it's, it's, it needs to eat. It needs to drink. It needs to go out. It needs to be cared for. So um, it definitely is. Yeah. Huge. I think especially, like you said, as we get older, that uh, there is a companionship um, that it, it, provides for you right but there are also you know some challenges of owning a pet which is why a lot of men our age and older don't want to take that responsibility on you know one of the biggest challenges of owning a pet is the cost it's really expensive to have a pet and it's not just food or litter or toys you know there are the vet bills mm -hmm. and you know, we, uh, just a little while ago, we lost another one of our cats and sweetest, sweetest cat we've ever had, uh, sweetest pet we've ever had. Um, but he was our special needs kitty. Uh, he had so many, uh, physical problems. Um, and he was so expensive, but you know, I would have, I would have sold a kidney if I had to, yeah. you know, if I couldn't take care of this little guy. Um, but I understand that that's a huge deterrent to a lot of people is the cost. Also, you know, I don't know about where you live, um, but if you're renting, a lot of places don't allow pets. Does your apartment allow pets? Do you know? Yeah. In fact, when I was looking for a place here, I, every place I looked, and maybe it's because of the demographic that lives here, um, every place I looked allowed pets. Yeah. Great. Uh, and you're right. It's the demographic, as we just said, it's how many you know gay people have pets it's very important to especially the gay men over 50 and yeah. who lives out here in palm springs it's that gay man over 50 so fantastic um another big thick deterrent or challenge of owning a pet is allergies a lot of people have allergies you have allergies right yes uh you and i have a really great friend who has allergies um but he would always pop a pill before he came to our house and he was on the floor yeah. playing with our animals because he loved them so much. He just, you know, couldn't have one because of his allergies. But, um, and another thing for this over gay male demographic, it's time, you know, um, 
our lives are very busy. A lot of people are still working. Social life is crazy. And people, you know, as they're aging or retiring, they want to travel, they want to go experience things. You can't really just up and go if you have yeah. a pet. You know, you have to really, like I said, we need babysitters. If we're going to be leaving, we need someone to stay at our house and stay with our animals, and make sure that they're taken care of the way that we want. But then that's another added expense. So, yeah, my to, friend who refers to himself as the single mom when his husband's out of town um, has a doggy daycare that a bench, like, depending on how long his husband's out of town, he needs a break. Yeah. So he'll bring him to doggy daycare and let him stay there overnight. And it's $100 a dog. He has two dogs. It's 200 bucks for a night. Right. Which is, is crazy how it's expensive crazy. things have gotten. And I, my friend Paul has two dogs, and he does online vet stuff, but they still charge him $300 a pop for 10 minutes online, Yeah, which is insane. Yeah, well, I mean, it's expensive. Yeah. Um, another really challenge of owning a pet is the loss and, and the passing of a pet. Yeah. You know, it's probably the most difficult thing anyone has to go through, but it's totally worth it. You know, we bring them into our lives. We have so much else going on in our lives every day. We have all this stuff and friends and places we're going and whatever, but our pets, we are their entire life. So we owe it to them to bring them in and, and escort them out, you know, in a really loving way. But I understand that that's a really difficult thing. My husband cannot be a part of that, um, you know, which I understand. But then I'm also like, oh, my God, yeah, you know, then you got to go through it alone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but it, it's a reason why some people just cannot take the plunge. Also, you know, in in thinking about having a pet as an older gay male, you know, you have to kind of figure out timing as well. You know, okay, a uh, cat can live over 20 years. How old am I? Who's going to take care of this guy if I leave? You know, that's why a lot, like with the older gay, that the quote I read, he got a rescue pet. Um, there are so many older animals that need homes. Uh, it's a great way to go. So instead of going like, oh, I, I'm not going to live long enough. Um, well, you know. I I have two friends out here who, you know, are very well off. And their pets have a place in their will. And there's a stipend that whoever is going to be oh. caring for the pet <laughs> yeah. after they're gone gets on a monthly basis to take care of food, to take care of its medical costs, to take care of all that stuff. So it's, it, it is interesting, you know, for a oh lot my of people, God. it is like having a child and they're yeah. making sure that it's cared for after they, they are gone. We've been through that. And Scott's like, all right, well, whoever gets the cat gets the house. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, <laughs> sure. Um, no, that's, it's definitely something that you need to think about. But, you know, another challenge for people to have a pet, some people just are not pet people, you know? Yeah, it's like some people aren't kids people. Um, you know, everybody has that. Right. Because it is a huge responsibility and you have to give up a lot. And, um, you know, what the payoff is, is if you've never had a pet, is, you know, so much more than you have to give up. But I can understand why people steer away from it. Yeah, no, I, I understand with all of these reasons, and there are plenty of other reasons. Some things that I don't really quite get are those people who are like, oh, I just hate pets. I just hate animals. Yeah. Like, um, I'm not sure I'm going to trust you as a human being. Yeah, then. I wouldn't either. You know? Like, um, okay. I also think that I had pets growing up, as you did, and it you really learn about responsibility, and you learn about loss. I mean... That's something that a child has to go through as well, kind of setting you up for life because there's a lot of loss in life. Without a doubt. You know, yeah. um, when my, when my stymies died, who had been, he was 14 years old. Um, and I had had from the time I was four, um, it devastated me. Sure. Um, that was one, you know, one of the ones who slept on my chest that night. Um, and as hard as it was and as devastating as it was, I was so grateful for that experience because it did open me up in a way that right especially in the environment i grew up in you know he he was in a lot of ways my safe harbor 
it was there was unconditional love right and that was the only place it came from so um yeah I, it, it was devastating but it also makes you a richer person oh agreed know, in the yeah. long run agreed all right so let's now move a little get a little happier at this moment uh let's talk about some of the things that gay men over 50 do that is that are just absolutely ridiculous um and you know who you are out there um what are some of the things you see um <laughs> this is where i'm gonna get the hate mail That's okay. um, i hate it when people dress up their pets Yes, right? That what is, is that? so self-indulgent and wrong because anytime you ever put anything on a pet, its first instinct is, get this shit off me. Right. So you have to know it's not comfortable. It's yeah. just not. You know, I, that makes me nuts. I agree. I, do, they, do they really want to be dressed up like that? You know, it, no. I, I don't think so. I, People are going to argue and say, yes, that their animals do, or their tiny little dogs have to have sweaters on because they're so cold. Okay, whatever. But I remember being um, in New York. I was just in New York working, and I was came out of my friend's apartment. I was It was on Park Avenue at 72nd. And I came out, and I had the doorman get, you know, was going to get me a cab. And as he was doing that, this man walks out who was probably 40, but, you know, I'm in my 20s, and I thought this was like this really incredibly old gay guy just came out. <laughs> you know, you could definitely tell he was gay by the way he was dressed, holding this little white thing who had this sweater on and booties. And it wasn't raining. It wasn't cold. It wasn't hot. Whatever. So he puts the dog down, and I was mesmerized by this guy. <laughs> he puts the dog down, and he says, Winky Tink for Daddy. Uh, and I was like, uh, uh, I waited, and he said, poof, poof, winky tink for daddy. And I was like, okay, I'm never going to be that guy. I just can't. It was ridiculous to me that, you know, first of all, calling your dog poof, poof, um, and then winky tink for daddy. I know we all talk to our cats <laughs> or our animals differently. We it's all baby, have that. Yeah, it's baby talk, right? Yeah, everybody has that animal, you know sound for and you have to talk differently to your different animals because they're just you know different people so you know yeah like in the beginning of this where i was like where's my big boy that's how i talked to jack because jack's like this guy he's just like the guy cat you know um but if you ever hear me say winky ting for daddy just slap me upside the head please well, i'm gonna Would do you? more than that okay good there's gonna be a pillow <laughs> over your face Quick. <laughs> um yeah Another thing that absolutely just bothers me is um, when you see someone walking their animal in a stroller, and it's usually like a pink stroller, and you're just like, did he really need to come to this wherever we are, mall or fair or, you know... Do you have to walk? Like, I understand some animals are older and can't walk anymore. And, you know, okay. But the pink stroller and like walking. Can we just say any color stroller? Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. If if your dog is not indigent and or you're, you know, it it is capable of walking on its own, it should not be in a stroller. I'm sorry. That's yeah. just a little, a little excessive. It's a little crazy. Yeah. And again, it's, it's, okay. So my theory is with the, what was, what did that guy say to his dog? Poof, poof. Poof, poof. Winky poof, poof. tink for daddy. And the folks <laughs> who, you know, there's, it brings it to a different level where they crave the attention from outside. Yeah. Um, and it becomes less about their pet and more about them. And I always, I've, I've referred to that for a very long time as, oh, they wear their dog as a brooch. It's a conversation piece. Um, okay. Anyway, like I said, I'm going to get some hate shit for that. Okay. <laughs> I know, but I just reevaluate those situations. Well, okay. I mean, and again, I am, I am at fault for a lot of, you know, fur baby daddy crap. If you come into my home, everything's about our animals. The house is run by the end. Although, you know, it doesn't look like that. 
Um, cause sometimes you walk into homes and it's just like you're hit with puffs of hair and the smell of the animal. And that's a little, yeah, mm, yeah. Let's, let's. You should still... never be able to smell a litter box yeah. or a dog bed. I agree. But that's just me. And right. what you know the commercial where people get nose blind? Is that what they call it? Okay, but it's I It's like get for what Glade Air Freshener or something yeah. like that okay. where they just get used to it and they don't they can't smell it anymore. Right. Um so I think that's what happens. It's like people who are too much cologne. They right. just don't realize it. So but. anything else bug you about some gay men over fifty and their animals? Uh, yes. Okay. A dog does not belong in a bar where there is loud music and crowds it just doesn't okay seriously guys are bringing their dogs to oh bars? and again it is it is solely for the attention you see it when it happens and wow. there are so many of them that don't care about the well-being of the dog because they'll let it wander on the extend the leash <laughs> in a place where somebody could step on it. Sure. Oh, so these are little dogs, not Some like of them dogs. are little. It's rare okay. that somebody walks into a bar with a large dog, but if maybe about a month ago, somebody came into a musical bingo with a fucking Great Dane. Why? Oh. And as a child, we had a Great Dane. They're kind of skittish dogs and a little bit neurotic. That Great Dane doesn't belong in an environment like that. Right. That is, to me, animal abuse. And anytime I see somebody walk into a bar, again, really loud music, lots of people who aren't expecting an animal in the environment, so they're not paying attention to what's on the floor, unless it's a drunk and you're stepping over it, <laughs> which is a little larger, so you could see that coming. Um, it's just, it's cruel. I, I, I don't understand that mentality. Well, yes, I do, because like I said, it's, a, it's, a, it's an attention grab. But the dog don't want to be there, and you could see it all the time. Yeah. And there is a difference, let me make this really clear, between a service animal, because I've worked with service animals, um, because I used to volunteer with children who were HIV positive or had full-blown AIDS, and they used service animals um, in the part of their therapy. Those animals behave very differently because they are trained to. Um, so you could, at least I can spot a service animal from a mile away because of okay. the way they behave. Can we just talk about that service animal thing? Yeah. Is everyone bringing their dogs everywhere now? Like every grocery store yeah. you go into and it, it doesn't matter anymore because You know who anybody... started this shit? And it's another reason reality television will be the downfall of a, the American society. It was Paris Hilton when she started walking around with that little dog in her purse. Yeah. And then everybody found the freedom to do the same thing okay that's just my take on it yeah. <laughs> i'm just gonna let you <laughs> that take she's, that take <laughs> she is the one who started this shit Damn bringing you your dog Paris. everywhere okay <laughs> yeah she definitely has one of those winky tink for daddy's little dogs <laughs> um cool all right anything else up your craw about uh gay men and their dogs no i think those are the, you okay. know the carriage the dressing and don't bring your dog someplace like a bar. It, that it please. doesn't belong. Yeah. Or even I a mean, supermarket. I, it's it doesn't belong in a supermarket. It doesn't want to go shopping with you. Right. I mean, there are a lot of um people, gay men, uh, especially out here in Palm Springs, who bring their animals everywhere they go. You know, like yeah. you're having a party. Oh, can we bring, you know, Muffy and Tuffy? It's like no. No. Sorry. Oh, and I, I got to add restaurants to that list to also. Same Because there are right? people with allergies, me being one of them. And if there's a dog sitting next to me, guess what? Right. It's an issue. And it was like people who used to smoke wherever they felt like it and didn't right. take the well-being of anybody else into consideration. And there are people who are deathly afraid of dogs. So, right. you know, have some compassion and consideration for other people on the planet. And your dog really doesn't want to be in a restaurant either. Yeah, I can say that like, pretty. I can say that with almost certainty. That, I mean, um, if, if it's out, an outdoor cafe, okay, that's totally totally different, different right? Absolutely. But inside yeah. a restaurant, no. no, you do not need to bring your dog. And or... then they start barking. Because actually, I, this situation happened maybe three or four months ago, where and it was you know it was a little cooler here in Palm Springs, so everybody was eating inside. Somebody brought a dog in, 
and it started barking and it wouldn't stop. And it wow. became very uncomfortable for everybody in the neighborhood to the point where the manager finally had to say, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. And then the guy got all pissy. And I'm like, you are 100% in the wrong. Why right. are you getting pissy? First of all, people tolerated you far longer than they should have. Um, Cause yeah. I'm sorry. It's like if a kid is crying, I raised younger siblings. My sister had a habit of throwing tantrums in restaurants. I got up from the table. I picked her up and we walked outside until she was able to compose herself. We talked through whatever it was the issue was. And she was calm and we went back in the restaurant. You know why? Because I didn't want to disturb other people's. Right. Yeah. When we were growing up, like our parents didn't even go out with us. Be like, take you out to the car, leave you there and go back and eat. You know, <laughs> With the Not windows like... rolled up. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Not like it is today. No. You know? <laughs> That's funny. Um, cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Um, so just to kind of wrap this this part of our conversation up, I found another really great quote um, that I want to read to everybody. So here goes. For the LGBTQ plus community, having a pet gives us a source of love, companionship, belonging, and purpose. Pets make our day and give us a reason to see the next one. Pet parenting isn't easy and neither is being queer or trans. In our minds and in our hearts, it's all worth it to take pride in pet parenting. Aww. Lovely. Yeah. And Absolutely. I do take pride in being a, a good pet parent. Um, not, a, not as crazy as some of those parents out there. Um, and never a winky tink for daddy kind of pet parent. But It's a winky tink for mommy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, depends on what I'm wearing. Um, all right. So next, it's now time for my absolute segment, favorite segment of our program, and that is the Savage Side Eye. And this is the moment where Michael and I um, get to throw some shade, throw a little side eye at somebody or something or some whatever who is bugging us. And today we actually have two side eyes. We're each going to throw. So Michael, let's, you go first. Who are you giving a little side eye to? Well, I'm going to take a little stroll from the pet arena. Okay. Although there is a mouse involved. Okay. Because this happened at Disney World. Okay. Um, a group of pussy ass neo-nazis showed up at Ew. their version of downtown disney it's called disney spring shopping um in neo-nazi garb and started throwing out homophobic and anti-semitic <sighs> hate speech as they worked their way through the entire shopping area intimidating people and just being assholes but here's why i called them pussy ass bitches is because they all had their faces covered which says so oh, much about yeah, who right? they are, because I have been part of hundreds of protests and political actions. And even during a point where I could have lost my job in the 80s because I was in corporate, never once was my face covered. You know why? Because I believed in the cause enough to not care. Right. These people are fucking cowards and bullies. And so they're getting my massive side eye today. Take your fucking masks off. So let us see your face and deal with the consequences from that. Ooh, you tell them, Michael. Mm. Awesome. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now for my side eye, and I'm bringing it back to the animal world. This is something everyone is going to be able to relate. I don't know exactly who I'm throwing my side eye to, but it's to anyone who had anything to do with any anything to do with having this play over and over and over on television and ruining our television experiences. It is that commercial with the Sarah McLaughlin soundtrack oh. where the animals are sad and in cages, and every time it comes on, you're like, oh my God, turn the channel, turn it quick, quick, and you can't get it quick enough, and then, like, who's got the remote, and then you change the channel, and then you wait 
what seems like 15 minutes. Because it you, is. Yeah, and then you go back and it's still going <laughs> on. And it's always at that one shot of that one animal and you're like, fuck you, Sarah McLaughlin and your whoever you are. <laughs> I don't even know what the commercial's for. It just it's for, it's for the ASPCA. Okay, well then, come on. You would... Stop pissing us off. That's who's getting my side eye, because I hate that commercial. It ruins everything. And like you said, people turn it off. Yeah, Nobody's watching that. And I've seen ha- it for... Have a, I, yeah, have a happy moment where people are adopting a pet, and you see kids, exactly. and you see families like embracing exactly, these Exactly, right? Show the joy that's related to animal adoption. And how about this? It's, this commercial has been playing for, what, 27 years, oh my probably? God, at least. And I didn't even know who it was for. Like, wow. is yeah, it really so you change work- the channel? Yeah, yeah. Is it really working for you guys, or is it just pissing everybody off? And poor Sarah McLaughlin. I mean, every time I hear that song, I'm like, oh. I think mean, she probably didn't expect it to run as long as it has. Well, and again, it's on for like five minutes. At but least. if she's making money, you know, I'm thinking she donated Sarah. the proceeds oh, to yeah. the. Yeah, she, usually, you, you know, with public service announcements, they give up their time freely. All right. Well, whoever it is, I'm throwing you that side eye. I like that one. Thank you very much. Um, All right. So, hey, everyone out there who's listening, and we want to thank everybody. We have the greatest listeners out there who send us very lovely messages. Although this week, if you're going to send negative messages about (laughs) Michael, please have them just go directly to Michael. Um, Because I, too, am one of your crazy pet parents out there. But we would love to hear all about you and your pets or whatever thoughts you'd like to share with us. Like I said earlier, our entire season is about relationships. Any sort of relationships that you'd like us to talk about, please, you know, let us know. So, Michael, how can people get in touch with us? People can hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok under the moniker No Two Gays About It. And that's the number two. So no, the number two gays about it. Um, and we really do want to hear from you. You could also shoot us emails at no two gays about it at gmail.com. And again, that's the number two. Um, and if you want to be a part of our family in a different way and help support us and help keep the show going, um, however you can, uh, you could hit us up on Patreon at no two gays about it. So that's Patreon forward slash no two gays about it and become part of our family in a different way. Yeah, we are so grateful for all of you out there for joining our conversation and, as Michael said, being part of our family because those of us gay men over 50, we need to build our families out there and we really respect and, uh, you know, love all of you that are out there. Yeah, so, oh, and let me, let me just yeah. say really quickly, please join us on uh, YouTube as well. Oh, and yeah, because then you please, can definitely see us. How great like, is that? Please like and subscribe because it definitely helps us out a, in a huge way. Yes. Um, and again, you can find us on YouTube at No Two Gays About It. And yes, please like, subscribe. We need you. Um, awesome. So fantastic, uh, Uncle Michael, uncle to my animals. So I'm getting the house. Is that what I heard? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, because you're the one who's going to get up at 4 a.m. to feed my precious. I go to bed at 4 a.m., so if you think that's an issue, it's not. Okay, but then so he also eats at 5 and at 7 and at 10. There's a lot. There's a lot. Um, all right, so I need to go and winky-ting for Daddy. So um, until next time, Michael, thank you very much. Until next time, thank you, Tom, and thank you guys so much for listening. It's been great. Bye.